So one of the big questions is, can you reverse type 2 diabetes while improving other cardiovascular risk markers? Because the thing people are concerned about is, oh sure, my diabetes get be gets better, but I'm gonna die because my cholesterol has gone through the roof. Yeah. And that's not what we see. So what our study showed us is yes, people can reverse their type 2 diabetes, but they can also significantly improve other cardiovascular risk factors. When we uh, have a rise in LDL, whether it's someone who is um, healthier or someone who has metabolic disease, I sit down and we have a huge discussion about it. And I prescribe statins very often in that patient population. You are about to see how the most brilliant medical influencers of our time are solving the heart disease epidemic with two very different approaches. Yes. The evidence and insights you are about to absorb will shape the discussion moving forward. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button and make your voice heard. Can the keto diet reverse heart disease? Hmm? Let's begin the discussion on the topic of the one-year cardiovascular results using the keto diet at Verta Health. Let's talk about fat. You know, okay. a major is we're talking about like a mental hurdle people have. When they hear about keto is it's high fat, and they've heard for many years that fat is linked with heart disease. So let's talk about the actual evidence. So really, the evidence is lacking. You know, that's, that's the big picture, high level uh, discussion about it, is even when we look way back when, when we were first told, you know, you need to limit fat, the evidence for that recommendation was not there. And since then, there's been more and more studies that have come out that have exonerated fat. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'll tell you that we are publishing our one-year cardiovascular outcomes. Over the next few minutes, you are going to see just how convincing the results of the one-year cardiovascular outcomes in the Verta Health study are. Then we will come full circle and talk about the way this information is being presented to the public. This is the leading edge of keto research. You'll understand each of the strong points of this study. The values underlined in the chart represent the mean values of the people who made it to the one year mark. The mean body mass index for participants starting out was right around 40. Most of the participants therefore began the study either severely obese or morbidly obese. All of these participants had type 2 diabetes. On average, these people lost an impressive 14.2 kilograms, or just over 31 pounds, in one year. So what our study showed us is yes, people can reverse their type 2 diabetes, but they can also significantly improve other cardiovascular risk factors, such as significant decreases in blood pressure while blood pressure medication is reduced. Medication to control high blood pressure was being used by 68% of the participants at the beginning of the study, which they were able to reduce to 56% of the participants after one year. Here you can see the drop in blood pressure, with systolic reduced by 7 and diastolic reduced by 4 millimeters of mercury. I was able to find this meta-analysis examining the effect of weight loss on blood pressure. With most studies lasting one year, participants losing about 9 pounds on average were able to lower their systolic blood pressure by 4.5 and diastolic by 3 millimeters of mercury. Therefore, the participants in the Verta Health study, losing on average over 30 pounds, appear to have obtained improvements in blood pressure that can be accounted for via weight loss, even as more than half of them remained on blood pressure lowering medication. This doesn't discount the improvements seen on the Verta Keto diet, but provides the context that weight loss leads to dramatic improvements in biomarkers. Next, let's talk about inflammation. Another really notable risk factor that got better is inflammation. So markers of inflammation, specifically one called C-reactive protein, decreased by 40% wow. over the year. I mean, that is remarkable. Here you can see the improvement in the inflammation marker C-reactive protein. 
You might be curious if the effect of weight loss on C-reactive protein would account for this reduction. The Verto results were better than what you might expect based on the findings of the effect of weight loss on CRP in this meta-analysis. Bearing in mind that the Verta study was conducted on severely obese and morbidly obese participants with type 2 diabetes, I had a feeling there might be some more relevant data from which we could make a comparison. Indeed, there is. I'll call this the CRP Look Ahead Study for short. This study specifically examines the effect of weight loss on CRP in persons with type 2 diabetes over a one-year intervention. The people in this study lost on average 9 kilograms or just under 20 pounds. This resulted in a 43% drop in C-reactive protein levels at the one-year mark. This is one of, if not the largest, randomized clinical trial examining the effect of weight loss on the inflammation marker CRP, specifically focusing on persons with type 2 diabetes. The CRP Look Ahead study differs from the Verta Health study in that it included moderate exercise, decreasing saturated fat intake, and changing the macronutrient composition to improve glycemic control, and I'd like to add, without dramatically lowering carbohydrates to less than 50 grams per day, people in the CRP Look Ahead study achieved a greater percentage reduction in CRP levels from baseline while losing less weight than those in the Verta Health study. Hmm, so are the Verta results remarkable and amazing? Or are these results in line with previous research examining the effect of weight loss on inflammation? And what other factors could be affecting inflammation? So markers of inflammation, specifically one called C-reactive protein, decreased by 40% wow. over the year. I mean, that is remarkable. And these are things right now that there aren't good medicines for. Inflammation or C-reactive protein can be lowered st some with statins, mm -hmm. but as far as dealing with the triglycerides and the HDL, uh, HDL levels, there's no medicine for that. But people can do it themselves by just changing the content of their diet. That's amazing. Weight loss, weight loss, and statin drugs. Here is Steve Finney, Chief Medical Officer at Verta Health, writing a recent blog post that acknowledges the role of statin drugs in reducing inflammation. We can see that about half of all the participants in the Verta Health study are on statin drugs to lower their cholesterol. This also has the effect of lowering inflammation. Overall, less participants in the CRP Look Ahead study were on statins, but they still obtained greater reduction in inflammation after losing weight, even though they lost less weight than the participants in the Verta Health study. Statins are a great segue to the next cardiovascular disease risk factor in the study, cholesterol. This next clip is a little long, but I want you to see this because it provides important context about cholesterol, the keto diet, and the Verta Health study. Do you have a policy at Verda how to address that if it does happen? Because it's controversial, right? There's no one right answer. And when you have a, a big company and you have uh, protocols in place, you have to be a little conservative, I would think, about that. Yeah. Oh, yes, we, we do. I mean, we absolutely. I mean, we definitely take any change in any biomarker that may be concerning incredibly seriously and we act upon it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we definitely, I mean, and I will tell you, you know, I, when we uh, have a rise in LDL, whether it's someone who is um, healthier or someone who has metabolic disease, I sit down and we have a huge discussion about it. And I prescribe statins very often in that patient population. I want my patients to be better in everything. I want all of their risk factors to be controlled. Right. Um, and that's absolutely my goal. 
Yeah, and I think it's, it's a good perspective if they still have metabolic disease. It's not like diabetes and metabolic disease goes away like that. It's a progression. So an elevated ApoB, as they're still on that progression, they still have insulin resistance. They may still have elevated inflammatory markers. That's a completely different situation than someone, these classic lean mass hyper responders who they have absolutely no insulin resistance. Their infl inflammatory markers are perfect. Their HDL and triglycerides are perfect. Those are two different scenarios that need to be approached differently. Yeah, I can say, you know, confidently in the patient population that we treat, we don't often see a rise in LDL cholesterol. Yeah. Anyone that does, um, you know, what's important is each individual patient to all of us. I mean, we are each individual patient to be treated as an individual and not as an average. Yeah. So anyone who deviates from what normally we see is something that we get on top of and that we have a discussion with the patient and we treat. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What she said that in the patient population she treats, they don't often see a rise in LDL cholesterol. But the average LDL cholesterol of everybody in the study did go up. This is important to understand. Their LDL cholesterol went up while they lost, on average, more than 30 pounds. And in this case, you really can't say, oh, LDL is not a risk factor for heart disease, because she explicitly said that she takes this very seriously and prescribes statins. More importantly, very few people in the Verta Health study were able to stop taking cholesterol-lowering medication. This is in part because statins reduce the risk of first cardiovascular disease events in patients with type 2 diabetes, even without high LDL cholesterol. Facts. They are being cautious because they know the outcomes of this study over the next few years will be a large determining factor in the success of Verta Health as a business. Verta Health is a scalable technology company focusing on continuous care intervention using nutritional ketosis to manage type 2 diabetes. If they are able to create demand for their service, they are accessing a market of more than 100 million Americans with type 2 diabetes and prediabetes. When the stakes are this high, they are not trying to sell people on good news about their bad habits. First, they have to prove that you will not die under their care, and they are not taking any chances. Emphasizing LDL particle size increasing on the Verta Health Keto intervention is not something I would bet my life on, as both small and large LDL particles are both atherogenic. The improvements in inflammation and blood pressure that seem most remarkable and amazing admittedly can't be distinguished from physiological changes associated with weight loss. So where does this take us? It takes us to the real reversal of heart disease. We are talking about verifiable confirmed regression of atherosclerosis in patients with end-stage heart disease. We are talking about Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn Jr. and providing the nutritional literacy it takes to understand and implement whole foods plant-based nutrition. These angiograms look truly remarkable and amazing. But couldn't these examples be partially attributable to the use of statin drugs? Yes, but he has additional data that precludes the statin era. We now had, within 15 months of starting the study, we had absolutely irrefutable scientific data that food and food alone could absolutely reverse cardiovascular disease. And you're gonna say, well, wait a minute, what about the statin drug? Well, this is the second patient I've shared with you today, Dr. Crow, who refused, and this patient, Don, 1986. We didn't have any statin drugs then. So even the, the many patients that come to see us who simply are crippled by statins and can't take them are in no way precluded 
from enjoying these benefits. I've heard that Esselstyn will happily compare his results against any data in the world. Pause this slide and read for yourself. This is the power of whole foods plant-based nutrition. On the other hand, this is the power of the Verta Health Keto Diet when it comes to cardiovascular health. Taking a step back for a moment, big picture. If you don't want to be another statistic as a result of the leading cause of death in America, heart disease, then I'll leave a link for you to pick up Esselstyn's book on Amazon or watch his presentation free on YouTube. Take a moment right now to click subscribe and turn notifications on. Now let's bring this full circle. How nutritional information is being presented to the public matters. In order to drive demand for high fat diets and the associated medical services, this is what you can expect to see. So I spent a year, an entire year, literally with my nose in the literature because what I was really being asked to do was solve the unsolvable problem, right? Obesity. We Pure all know obesity. it can't be solved. And so spent a year reviewing the literature and was shocked, was really shocked when I did that to find there's no evidence for the low fat diet. Yeah. Huh? Hold the phone. So the what is going on? No evidence. Huh? No evidence. Nah. <laughs> Dr. Halberg, nah. Dr. Halberg, if you spent a year studying the evidence and you are not aware of the lifestyle heart trial and the monumental work of Dr. Dean Ornish, then it is my opinion that you cannot be trusted with my life and the life of my loved ones. Nah. If, on the other hand, you are aware of his work and instead, you chose to craft a narrative of revisionist history, nah. then you have further lost my trust. The man who she is talking with in this clip, Dr. Mark Hyman, has already violated the public trust in a similar, irreparable manner, and I am not the only one who shares that opinion. You know, Mark wrote a book called Eat Fat to Get Thin. Yeah, and that book, um, by the way, has four pages on my work and he's and he Mark just makes stuff up. It's unfortunate. I don't say that about most people, but he put in there. Oh, Dean's diet. They in the 1998 uh, JAMA study, they gained weight, their cholesterol went up, and their arteries got more clogged. I said, Mark, their uh, their cholesterol went down by an average of 40 percent. They lost an average of 24 pounds, and their arteries showed some reversal after one year, and even more reversal after five years. What are you talking about? And and you know I had to threaten to sue him to get him to change that. And he said, "Oh, it was a transcription error." You know, it was like just nah. stupid stuff. Well, this really, is like it was that skewing. misquoted. It was that misquoted. This, all the t people skew. It's all about perception, and so data can be presented in lots of well, ways. Well, this wasn't a perception to... issue. This was just wrong. You uh -huh. know, let me just jump, let me just be really clear about that. Does the keto diet reverse heart disease with continuous care under the guidance of the leading low carb experts in the world? I was able to find this preprint version of the two-year results from the Verta Health study. So this is before peer review and probably not finalized yet, but it gives us a window into the second year results. If I'm reading this correctly, it looks like they are reporting one onset of AFib with heart failure and two cases of chest pain, one resulting in a stent placement. Y'all know what time it is. Red pill vegan. Next.